Hey, James, lovely to see you again. You too, Gabby. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm really excited for this second episode of All About AI Agents. And today what we're going to be looking at is, you know, we spoke about the introduction to AI agents and what they're all about. We touched on, you know, how you would achieve an agentic framework, right? But this episode is all about how we do that. Yeah, we're definitely going to be getting into uh, some of the things we touched on previously, a bit more detail, still keeping it quite high level, but getting into a bit more how these things actually work under the hood. And and you know what, James, that's a question I get very often. What makes it an agentic framework? What kind of methods do we have to implement to make a workflow more agentic? So let's share what we know about how we do it. Yeah, definitely. I mean, so let's start with what people will probably already be quite familiar with, you know, how we tend to work with LLMs already. Uh, in sort of standard workflow systems. So you've got things like traditional chains. These are more like, you know, DAG style approaches. Uh, yep. Touched on the, the previous pillars we've touched on before of like, you know, how autonomous, goal oriented, um, it's self improving these things are. You know, DAG is kind of goal oriented, it's aiming for something, but it's not particularly autonomous or, or improving. It just goes through mm. the, the, the motions. Yeah. Um, and I, th I think the DAG approach, right, is very similar to if people have been using Promflow to build out LLMs they'd be familiar with the DAG style workflows. Definitely, yeah, you know, you're just chaining one thing to the next. Again, you know, Langchain, where a lot of people end up starting with these things, again, very similar. Um, yeah, that's that's a really great way to to think of these sorts of things. Um, you've also got, you know, prompting, you know, the, the C little example I've given here, but, you know, you can, you can get the LMs to kind of modulate what they're doing just based on the prompt. Um, which is like, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of autonomous. It's making some decisions. Um, but again, it's still not really agentic. It's just all within that that single prompt, uh, all within that one interaction. Um, and then we get to structured outputs. Uh, now, this is um, this is something that a lot of LLMs are increasingly uh, leveraging and using. A lot of uh, frameworks are increasingly using, where you can get your LLMs to output in a very specific format. For example, yeah. JSON, um, and that way you can start to make decisions based on what the outcome is because it's reliable and you know what's coming. And that's where yeah. we really start to approach agents where yes, the LMs are choosing how to output, but then decisions can be made on that reliably. Um, cool. So if you recall from the previous video, we touched on these sorts of five high level ideas of roughly um, the patterns that agents tend to go through. And for each one, we're going to have a brief look at a sort of high level example, some very sa sample generic use cases. Um, and then that would be a great place to build on in future where we can get into a bit more of the meat of how these things actually work and what they're doing. Cool. I've got some interesting questions, but let's let's get into all the different the different kind of methods that you have on the screen and then I can ask you some interesting questions. Yeah, definitely. So uh, building off what we previously just discussed, the structured outputs, that's a really great place to start for what I personally consider to be sort of like, you know, and just beginning to enter the agentic frameworks, which is routing. Um, and this is where, you know, you have a prompt of saying, for example, here, uh, assess the sentiment of this text, reply in a JSON format of whether it's positive or negative. Um, yeah. And you can get your response, you can pass it as a JSON. Um, yeah. And then you can make deterministic decisions based on it, you know, if sentiment equals positive, uh, call this function. Uh, if it's negative, call a different function. So it's quite simple in this particular yeah. context. It can get a bit more, um, a bit, bit more clever, uh, but it can start very basic like this, where it's purely just you're taking the output and making reliable decisions based on what the LLM is deciding for you. Um, brilliant. So next, we've also got uh, reflection. So this is what a lot of people may have heard of as maybe make a checker patterns. That uh, term likes to be thrown around a lot. It's essentially the LLM uh, being given a task, coming up with an output, and then through a different persona or maybe a different model entirely, uh, takes that output and compares it to various criteria or is just used as a judge. Uh, yeah. And it can give feedback, it can, can suggest improvements. Yeah. And this is really where that improving iteratively cycle starts coming in uh, to yeah. agentic frameworks where one can come up with an output. The other goes, okay, well, have you tried con um, based on my my notes or the rules of the task? Have you tried considering changing this or maybe you should change that? And then it goes back to the first LLM, the maker again, and that will go, okay, based on these improvements, I should change this. And yeah. that can go around a certain amount of times. It can go around yeah. until the judge is happy uh, yeah. or until various other um, requirements are met. 
So tell me then, James, in terms of a real world application, if you're building out a real world workflow and, and having to incorporate some of this agentic stuff that we're talking about, why would you incorporate routing and reflection appropriately? I mean, you know, routing comes in all over the place. Yeah. Uh, some Even some of the other patterns we're about to get to, things like tool calling, that's essentially routing because the model is deciding, I have all of these options available, which one should I go to next? Um, you can also have it, again, for example, um, if you had the, the agent as some sort of assistant in perhaps a call center or customer routing, based on what the customer wants, you can direct them to different places, uh, purely yeah. based on the transcript of what the customer is saying. And reflection yeah. again, you know, very versatile, uh, writing emails and improving them based on uh, company policy, for example, making sure it fits the tone and the requirements, or even yep. writing code. It's a brilliant one for that of write some code, try running yep. it. If you get an error, well, here's the check, here's what I think yep. is wrong, try yep. again. And also we use it a lot in evaluation, right? Just evaluating whether what, what you've got from, from the LLM previously, whether that's accurate enough to be accepted as the truth or ground truth. Of course, yeah, comparing it against all your rules. It's, again, reflection, brilliant for that. Yeah, cool. Um, so as the, the next set of tools, we've got, uh, sorry, the next set of um, patterns, we've got tool calling. Uh, and tool calling is, again, a very versatile one. The sample yeah. I've got here is very basic. It gets a lot more complex than this. Uh, but essentially, you can ask the LLM a question, and it has a toolkit, a set of tools that you built for it. And they're just deterministic uh, functions written in normal code. And all you need at the beginning is a set of doc strings, essentially say, you know, this is what it's expecting as an input, an output, a description of what the function does. Uh, and then the LLM can um, take a look at the, the input question and say, okay, these are all the tools I have available. Maybe I can use one of them based on the descriptions. Uh, in this case, what's the weather like in London? LLM that was trained three years ago, it's not gonna know what the weather's like in London right now, but it does know it has access to a function that can call a weather API. So it can use that it can get the response and then it can generate a, a, a nice output for you. Yeah, cool. And as a rule of thumb, you tend to use tool calling to call APIs, correct? So that's how we kind of incorporate tool calling here. Yeah, APIs is definitely a very heavy use case. Pretty much anything where you need the reliability of deterministic code, you know, complex mathematical functions, uh, internal um, functions that you've got written. But yeah, anything where you want it to be really reliable or yeah, external live data, things like that. Um, and then on this slide, we've also got planning. Um, so this is where it starts to get, you know, um, quite heavily into making decisions and starting to use the other patterns we've already discussed. Uh, in this one, I've got an example of write me a story about the world's tallest tree. Uh, it might seem like a fairly simple task, but for an LLM, you know, it's got to decompose that using planning into, well, what is the tallest tree? Maybe I need to use a tool to run a Google search to find out. Um, yeah. What's a good plot for this story? Uh, is my story any good? Maybe throwing in some reflection in there. So it needs to come up with a, a step, um, a series of steps, which it will drop down on a scratch pad or something to just to hold its train of thought. Uh, it'll come up with a series of steps in the plan, iterate through each step, and then compare to make sure that it's still on track and it doesn't need to replan for any reason. Uh, so yeah, that might be reflection, it might be tool calling, uh, and then in the end, it will reach the end of its plan and it can give you an output. Uh, and you know what, James, I've seen a lot of this planning uh, method that we're talking about here in terms of being, well, actually being incorporated in a lot of marketing departments where they've got, for example, a weekly or monthly newsletter. And what they really ought to need to do is do some research beforehand, plan what they're going to be writing out in the newsletter, and then automating that to be sent out to their subscribers as well. I see this being used quite a lot and quite a lot in anger, really. Yeah, definitely. I mean, that's one of the one of the pullbacks of just using straightforward language model interactions is there's only so many thoughts that it can hold in its head at uh, one time. Uh, but when you start writing them out on these sorts of scratch pads, yeah, you can come up with a more robust plan and you can go through step by step and you're able to do a lot more in a single agentic flow. Um, and speaking of how, you know, planning, starting to use some tool calling reflection, that's when we get more into the realms of multi-agent. Um, and this is just a very sort of high level example of how you might have an agent assessing some some sort of policy, perhaps in some sort of legal or insurance sense. Um, but again, very flexible. And you can just see here, there's a sort of a sea of different agents, which we've already discussed um, doing various different things. So you've got 
uh, some reflection over there, generating SQL code, checking it's okay with an agent that has a, a QA engineer persona. Uh, and then you've also got some planning at the, the user proxy end. That's where you know, you've got, here's the question, what steps do I need to do to answer it? As you were saying, perhaps writing that monthly email, what do I need to do in order to, to achieve that? Um, again, you've got routing. You know, I've got I've got this input, this stage of the plan. Where do I need to root off to next? Uh, and you've got a bunch of tool calling here in that sort of lighter blue of like you know running rag searches. Maybe you're hitting the endpoint of a classical ML model, uh, and also maybe you're just running uh, SQL code against the database, for example. All of that would be done using tools. Cool. Um, and if you really want to, you can even start getting multimodal with it. Take that multi-agent system we had previously. You don't just have to have text yeah. input. Maybe you want to have voice input with speech to text. Maybe you want to pass it through a translator. Maybe you want to pass in a PDF or a document and you need some OCR in there. And then likewise, maybe your agent will decide this is best as an email. Maybe it needs to generate an image or a graph, or maybe it needs to do um, text to speech on the other end. So there's loads of different options there as well. Cool. And it would be really cool, James, to see this all in action. Well, that is definitely planned for a future video. So if anyone wants to see any demos of these, how they happen, uh, definitely stick around, keep an eye out for our next videos. Um, just some thoughts to take away before you rush off to click those. Um, just make sure that when you're starting to work with these patterns, play around with them, you're staying in control of what's happening. You're limiting your loops. You wanna make sure that you have max timeouts and iterations so that you don't have make a checker patterns just going around forever. <laughs> Uh, make yep. sure you're using the right model for the for the right job. You know, um, yep. if you've got guard railing, you need to make sure you use a high reasoning model. Uh, summarization, no need to blow loads of money on expensive tokens when smaller models do the job. And again, user proxy, user proxy needs to be very high reasoning. Uh, and finally, keep it simple. These are new frameworks that are changing all the time. Make yep. sure you're using the right framework for the job and you're not losing control because otherwise, Gary, you have to be very, very careful of it's the black box, black box. <laughs> you can very easily lose control of what you're doing you have no idea what your agents are doing and it's be costing you a bomb so keep an eye out for that um, yeah. and yeah make sure that you're mixing and matching your patterns as appropriate make sure you're using yeah. the right ones make sure you stay in control uh, and yeah remember you don't have to use all of these sometimes it's better just to keep it simple and stick to what you know if that's what the job calls for very good thank you very much for for that whole session in terms of how we incorporate different methods that we've spoken about to achieve your agentic framework, James. Tell me then, James, what can we look forward to in the next episode? Well, in the next episode, we're going to go through some of these frameworks. We're going to go through actual notebooks, seeing them working in action, seeing some yeah. code that you can take away and try yourself. Uh, and right. yeah, having a go with some of the frameworks. Cool. Um, that's it for now. See you in the next episode.